is a primary form of communication for people of every culture, and it's through art we learn about ourselves, our history, and each other. We keep our most precious art in galleries or museums as a way to guarantee it will be accessible to a wide audience now and for generations to come. Some communities, like Richmond, California, don't have easy access to these galleries, and because of that, children may miss out on the art experience. While the Richmond Art Center and other nonprofits do provide quality exhibits, classes, and programs, the art museum experience was still something the city could not offer until the Richmond Arts and Culture Commission brought Art Train to town. A few years ago, while John Teisel, former chairperson of the commission, was an attendee at the Americans for the Arts National Conference in New York City, he saw an opportunity to literally bring a museum to Richmond. I was there visiting uh, this, at this convention and noticed this dis display for the art train, and I was just intrigued by it because of the combination of the train and the art. The art train rotates different parts of the country every year, and it was coming to the West Coast uh, in this year. The art train has been traveling throughout the U.S. for 31 years. This trip out, a precious cargo of over 70 original pieces of art. The exhibition that we have on board currently is the Artistry of Space, and it's 78 original artworks that are on loan to us from NASA's art program. Their mission is to uh, use arts to build the community and to bring art to those communities that have youngsters uh, and adults, but uh, the youth who cannot really have access to uh, first-class museums. And uh, we knew that in Richmond, uh, we have kids that would really love this opportunity and really didn't have that kind of access. Virginia Rigney, manager of the Arts and Culture Commission, suggested Tysel continue his work with the commission to make sure one of the art train stops was Richmond. And so for almost a year, Tysel, Rigney, and volunteer citizens worked together hammering out details, organizing committees, and recruiting the support of local businesses. Tysel said finding the site for the train was the biggest challenge, but also the most gratifying. After selecting the UC Berkeley Field Station, we got support all the way from the Chancellor at UC Berkeley on down. Lawrence Hall of Science is coming to provide activities for kids. We're going to have moon rocks there that actually came from the moon. And then we didn't know anything about the businesses that were on either side. And it was just a very gratifying thing to, to meet these people and see how wonderful uh, community neighbors that they are. Local businesses helped out and employees stepped forward to volunteer their business expertise. Zeneca Incorporated, a site neighbor turned sponsor, supplied water, power, phone lines, parking, and a reception facility for Art Train's opening fundraiser. The commission partnered with school districts, teachers, and AC Transit to bring over 1,200 children to the Art Train. Total attendance over four days, 3,060 people. When the train finally rolled into Richmond, over 200 volunteers had come on board. This community has just stepped up to the plate and it is awesome. Volunteers are just waiting to help out. People are volunteering to do, be docents on the train. People have been painting the panels for exhibiting artists all day long. The city departments have sent truckfuls of guys out that have been helping us all day long and we couldn't have done all this without them. Volunteers came out to greet visitors, help with science projects, and answer questions. Inside the Art Train Museum, space travel brought to life by artists including Andy Warhol and Peter Max. There's this one picture of an astronaut and it looks really nice. We saw these drawings and paintings, and the one I liked, it looked so real. It was a man and a woman working on a spaceship. Yeah, that's the one I liked. It's amazing, especially Stan Stokes' work. This is something important for our country, and why not? We're glad to be here. You know, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing, the talent. Oh, this is fantastic. It really is. It's close to home, it's free, and it's art. We want to take in the Richmond Art Center as well. I mean, that's something we learned about today, that that's, it's close and it's available. It really sent me back to my past, you know, realizing that I've lived through this whole spectacular 
program and I also felt by watching, looking at all these paintings, also kind of took me back as, I, as an art historian looking at how, how we as present day artists depict what's, what's common to us and how artists in the past have done the same. I thought the artwork was just fantastic and it, it, some of it looks like posters but then you really look close at it and you can see the artist strokes, brush strokes and things and it's really fantastic. And above the gantry, what do you see? A red. Inside the art train, docents provided information and answered questions. Smile. Some volunteers were even called on to act as official photographers. But despite the moon landscape, this youngster wasn't fooled. We didn't go on the moon for real. That was just a picture. I see. Did you smile in your picture? I was going to smile like this, but it was too late. And though the kids were too savvy to believe they visited the moon, there were those moon rocks, courtesy of NASA, that caught the eye of more than one youngster. Lawrence Hall of Science helped set up experiments and demonstrations for visitors. Youngsters made sundials, then took them outside to check the accuracy. There were also photographs that kids made by placing bits of flowers and plants on photosensitive paper and then developing their photos in the sun. De Anza High School's robotics team was on hand to demonstrate their work. Wide-eyed youngsters gathered round and some even chanced a ride, courtesy of the student-built robot. De Anza High Schooler Kevin Antaki understands the kids' enthusiasm. A lot of them are really interested. They want to drive it and control it and wonder how it works. And they also wonder if it's going on at their school or a school that they're going to go to. Another big hit with the kids, the NASA spacesuit. But wearing it full time, well, that wasn't quite as popular. Does it make you want to be an astronaut? Whether inside or out, the kids didn't have to look far to be inspired. One of the things they were probably most excited about on the trip was to actually see the artist in work doing this sculpting and the, I guess he was carving. And for those interested in taking up wood carving, Australian carver Keith Gall offered this advice. So yeah, make lots of sawdust, do lots of chips. You know, just practice and keep, keep your chisels really sharp, learn how to sharpen. Just, if you take an interest in it, then you, you find things out as you go. Richmond artist Mark Legrand Trotter expresses himself through art and encourages kids to do the same. My advice to them is just uh, express whatever you feel inside. Uh, don't worry about uh, whether your art is going to be ugly or not or whether people are going to like it. You don't even um, have to worry if you have enough training or not. Just um, express yourself through art. Without a doubt, art is the truest form of self-expression, and its impact can last beyond a lifetime. These kids, uh, because of even this one experience, will have that opportunity to build on throughout the rest of their lives. And hopefully, they'll be inspired to contribute their art to the next generation of art train visitors.